All right, dude, what episode is this? Uh, episode nine? Eight. I think of, it's eight. It's episode eight? I think it's eight. Okay, episode yeah. eight of the React Lord podcast. It's good to see y'all. Yeah. Um, I'm Nathan. I'm V. The only reason I know that it's eight is because I just made a YouTube video and I had to look it up. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I was making excuses for why I didn't make any YouTube videos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I kind of wish it was nine, though, because <laughs> then next week it would be ten, and I'm... Oh, those double digits, dude. Looking for those tasty double digits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, how was your week? Um, week was busy. A lot of work, a lot of work. Um, two middle jobs. School, yeah, two jobs. Middle school is chaotic as usual. Mm-hmm. Coffee job. Much chiller. <laughs> I much <laughs> I enjoy being there much more. Um, is it just because it's like a different mindset? Like your brain gets to relax a little bit? Like what is it about the job? You think? I think um, I personally just get to have more fun. You know, I get to talk about things I'm interested in rather than like, you know, justifiably making the uh, taking the attention to the child. Like, you know, the, yeah, how the can child, I better this child's yeah, development today is, it's, it's is more of a series. <laughs> it's not about me. Whereas at the coffee shop. It's about, about me. me a little bit more so <laughs> than at the middle school. Yeah, dude, I was just reading a New York Times article about <laughs> how, like, there is a... I don't know if this is true, because I don't see it at my job, but like, maybe you can see it in other places. But essentially, there's a there's a push from bringing your whole self into the, the work environment as of late mm-hmm. with the whole quiet quitting thing. It, it's, like, hands in hand of, like... Uh, administrations like bring less of yourself I I think it's just because our culture we're such degens or something like don't bring your TikTok persona in I think is really what the article is saying okay like I I think it's targeted at Gen Z specifically Mm -hmm. like don't (laughs) don't be you at the workplace (laughs) okay that's weird (laughs) but I I don't know even as a teacher I always felt some some grain of that being true right it's Uh like you can't it's not about you. That's not your mission in, in that role, that position. Yeah. It, and, you know, and so. it probably shouldn't be, no, especially yeah, yeah, because, yeah. it you know, kids in middle school are experiencing so many emotions and have such a lack of experience that yeah. like it, it, it's really it, it is about them. They're there it to is. learn. The school is there for them. It's so. literally designed for them. Yeah. Like, it's and all you know, about them. I tell all the students there, like, I am a resource for you. Yeah. And so, like, if I don't go in with that attitude, I am not, I'm just gaslighting them at that point, right? Yeah, and I think there's a lot of jobs where it's like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the job needs to be, you know, a lot more separate from your authentic self uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In, in many cases. So, yeah. anyway, I was thinking about that in that New York Times article. Should have oh, brought sure. it up. Should have brought it up. Uh, it's okay. Maybe maybe we'll have time at the end. We will bring it up. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I could look it up. Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though... I do enjoy um, <laughs> being around adults. It's very yeah, nice. Dude. You know, not to say I'm not around adults at the school, but it, I mean, it just it keeps circling back to like the attentions on the student. Yeah, I think you know, that's we're why we're talking it's... about students. We're talking about the school, whereas at, at the mm-hmm. coffee job, I, we're talking about ourselves. We're talking about each other. We're yeah. asking each other questions and just all around vibing, which. Yeah. <sighs> It's just more fun. Sorry, kids. Yeah. It's just and, more and fun you, to, like, you know, be around people my age. And I think kids would understand that. They would prefer to be around kids their age probably. than you. No offense, because you're an awesome person. But, like, you know, even yeah. in that breath, it's like, well, same, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, my week was good. I actually ended up putting a YouTube video out, which I have not done in two months mm-hmm. since I started my job. Yeah. So that was really interesting. And I made it in, like, a day, which is weird. And felt a little like not what I usually do. Okay. It, was, it was a vlog. I mean, I posted a vlog. <laughs> fucking YouTuber. I posted a freaking vlog, dude. Uh huh. Is that um, kind of a hint onto what the topic of the video is? Kind of a spoiler alert. I already already saw the thumbnail, so I know oh, what it's you? about. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I keep mulling over that idea of like, is Twitch on fire or is it not? Mm-hmm. And and what is solid moves for like content creation? I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's what my video is about. So that was fun. I might make more vlogs. We'll see. But I don't know. It was, a, it was a weird week watching all of the drama unfold. But before we get to that drama, I have thrift store drama because I did other stuff in the week besides just make content. Tell me. Okay, here it is, man. All right. Um, I got a vest. So it starts with a vest at okay. Goodwill. 
Uh-huh. Okay. I find a vest at Goodwill and it's like five bucks and it's one of them puffy jackets. You know what I mean? Okay. Like it's not quite as nice as, you know, maybe like Carhartt or like a name brand jacket, but Patagonia shit, you know, not like that, but it was still nice. Puffy inside okay. soft. Love that. I picked up this vest. I'm feeling good. I'm on a thrift store date with my wife. Okay. We're hitting up thrift stores. Mm-hmm. I'm ready to find some goods. I get to one of my favorite thrift stores, which I won't say, even though I'm just kind of ashamed <laughs> In this local thrift store, I get there and um, I find another vest. Uh huh. Beautiful vest. The vest to beat all vests. Uh huh. Okay. Corduroy. Dark brown. Double layered. Inside. Soft. And we Beautiful. got it? It fits me like a glove. You know my body type. It's weird. We got it? We don't have a conventional body type. I'm short. My torso is a bit longer, it feels like, in many clothes. So. It's hard to shop. It's yeah. Shop. So I found this man and it fit like a glove. I looked at my wife and I said, I'm going to get this. And she goes, oh my God, it's only five bucks. And I was like, no <laughs> shit, dude, I'm getting this for five bucks. So I take it up there. It has two tags on it. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, $22. Uh-huh. So I asked, $22 on this tag, $5 on this tag. Um, do we know what the price is? What do you think the price was? $22. It was $22. But she dead ass looked at me and tried to tell me that that must have been the original price of this, this like vintage. Oh, like back when it first vest. came out, like retail? Yeah. Like I just it used dead ass caught her to lie. She bought that shit at a different thrift store, obviously, uh-huh. and then like kept the tag on and then upselled it like what? Like five times as much? You know? Mm. You bought it with a tag on. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, you should it, take the tag off, dude. My my little heart and my, my, I got so excited. It fit me like a glove, Nathan. Yeah. Like a glove. Did you get it? No, I did. It's 22. I'm not going to spend $22 for a fucking vest. I'm not Why doing not? that, dude. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm thrifting. I'm not trying to, I don't, it wasn't, that, it was just. It's a new economy. It was 22 really the principle is the new matter. five. No, it was really the principle that matter. I didn't like the way she <laughs> snatched it up either. Like, oh, she sure. looked hella embarrassed. Uh-huh. Like, it was a vibe that was just like, and re- I'm on a high. You got to remember, uh-huh. I'm coming in off a high. This is my second vest that I found that looks amazing on me. You know mm. what I mean? And I'm just like, dude, today's a vest kind of day. I was just like riding this high. Uh-huh. She snatched it up so fast, ripped off that like $4 tag and was like, oh, I'll get it priced right and put it back out. Don't worry, I'll put it back. I might have spent 22 bucks on it had the vibes been a little bit better. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I was just really disappointed with the whole transaction. Damn. I wanted that vest, dude. It fit me so good. Yeah, that's demoralizing. Anyway, that was my drama. Oh, for sure. Super intense. Yeah. Serious drama. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet Slicker would love to be able to say the same, you know? <laughs> I don't think Slicker would have spent the 22 bucks either. He doesn't have it. True. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I it hope he's good. getting the help that he d- he deserves and needs. Yeah, dude. So we're going to talk drama. We're not going to mm-hmm, talk about mm-hmm. all the drama. That would be impossible. And that would be like a nine hour podcast. Or the Hasanabi broadcast where he <laughs> drama it up I for like actually, 10 hours. Dude. Hot take. I disagree with that. I think all this drama could be said within like the span of maybe like 45 minutes. I would even say like it could be summarized in a paragraph if someone really wanted to. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just saying, you don't I have agree. to talk about it for 10 I hours. Agree. Just like, not, you don't have to do it. But he did. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Love the man, but Jesus Christ, dude. We did not finish that. <laughs> we did not finish that VOD. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I just, I couldn't. I couldn't. This whole week, honestly, watching content creators be live mm-hmm. was really hard. And I think you, you had it the hardest time with it. You just didn't like it. I didn't like it. I couldn't. Even when I had the ability to tune in, I didn't. And, you know, it was kind of impossible to get away from it. Like, I, I do still know some things, They're like the big things for sure. Well, um, people can't stop talking about it. Yeah, like, it's which not, is fucking you know. weird. I, I don't know. It's it's moved beyond Twitch, too. Like, Bloomberg, yeah. BuzzFeed, you know what I mean? Uh, it's almost all like over Twitter. because of the lack of meta, everyone's just latching on to this as a oh. meta. Drama that, meta. Yeah, drama meta in my mind, but I don't know. That's just a vibe I'm getting. I don't have any like evidence for that. Well, there's plenty of fuel for this fire of yeah. drama meta, though. And, it, and it's just, for me, I watch trash television. 
you know this about me. Like we, I, wa I love... we watch trash television together sometimes. <laughs> Dude, I absolutely <laughs> adore a good dumpster fire. I'm about a dumpster fire. I will park my car up and watch the dumpster fire. I'm terrible. I'm just awful. Mm -hmm. Honestly, like saying it out loud, it, it I love drama. I'm, yeah. a dr I'm a drama frog and I hate that about myself. But like, you know, <laughs> scripted drama feels different than like, I don't know, something about the drama on Twitch came off way too intimate that it was like cringe for me. Uh, yeah, totally. I will say as soon as someone starts crying, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if it's not scripted or it doesn't feel, mm -hmm. I'll watch a Kardashian cry. But when Adept started crying, like that's really like I had to tune, I had to tune out. Exactly. I had, it, that felt too much. It for felt the, too for the viewers listening at home, like the difference we're making here is like, you know, watching Selling OC and watching yeah. the XQC Breakup Adept debate. Scene. Wait, I mean, should we even really be calling it a debate? That was that wasn't a, something different. That was a private conversation, publicly yeah. televised to like six figures of people. That was like distress. So it was that crazy. kind of stuff, no. But do I like to watch scammers implode on themselves? Yes. I, I, <laughs> I, love, I love to see Slicker just get dragged by everybody that he's borrowed money from. Okay. The tweet threads that, uh, you, know, can, you know, ensued um, uh -huh. off of this. I, I love to see a scammer get called out. That's yeah, drama yeah. that I can I can back up. Like when you see people do the uh, call centers to stop scam calls. Oh yeah, oh, like dude. Kiboga. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Mm. For sure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nom 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 nom. So it's slicker. It's literally it's slicker. Yeah. Uh, Not was, crazy slick, but we'll get to that. Maybe we'll touch it, but I don't know. If we'll <laughs> That is a, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Slicker admitted that he's been scamming for years um, and, it, and it all came back to his gambling addiction, right? So mm -hmm. he, he did like sports bets um, and, and other, other things like that. So he, he's been scamming for a long, long time and it all came to a head, um, I guess thanks to, thanks to Twitter and, and, and Discord and various social medias where it came to light that, oh, Slicker has asked you for money. Oh, well, he's asked... You know this, this guy mm. for money as well and and, and this girl and, and this streamer and so it's it's pretty bad i think it, the total came out to be like 380 400 thousand dollars um scammed out of these people mm. yeah, i mean dude. in this article from buzzfeed it does say that un although it's unsubstantiated it could be upwards of three hundred eighty thousand, but definitely at least 200k which is still a ridiculous amount of money, especially like, you know, smaller streamers or friends who aren't even like, you know, probably have a regular day job. Like that seems like a compromising amount of money that like you just abuse your relationships on like, how, like what yeah. a, what a um, betrayal of trust, betrayal of like, like um of like finances like people Dude, are hurting absolutely. especially right now so In like this economy what a crazy time <laughs> to like take money from people it's been years yeah. too this is like a long con that he's been he's been writing mm -hmm. uh, apparently like ten thousand dollars from one individual like that's not chump yeah. change dude that's like that's like a salary mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh, some people make know? that like, amount of money in crazy. one year <laughs> yeah i mean that's wild. And in response, tons of streamers came out. And obviously, this is tied back to his his desire to gamble, right? His addiction to gambling. Um, and a lot of streamers came out saying, you know, seek help, mm -hmm. Slicker. And there was a Discord call with some big streamers. And they were like, hey, man, we'll, we'll pay back the debts. We're giving you an out. You know what I yeah. mean? Go, to, go, go seek therapy. Go to, you know, Gamblers Anonymous. Get the help you need. Um, which, which was kind of nice to see streamers rally around one of their own. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when they've done something so bad, yeah. such as scamming people out of money, um, you know, because you never want to see one of your friends succumb to any addiction. Mm -hmm. And gambling ends really badly for a lot of people. Yeah. So, um, and and then again, a lot of streamers noted that, right? Streamers like Pokimane and Miskiff, uh, Hassan included, um, all said that they would boycott. Uh, Twitch during Christmas weekend protests of the platform's prior rules for gambling, i.e. the slots, right? Mm -hmm. XQC then tweeted um, in response to that, Ludwig got... So all of these streamers, right, they're they're yelling at each other. Ludwig is like, hey, I want to help also pay for these scammers. Mm -hmm. Get Slicker some help. 
What's crazy though to me, and correct me if I have this right or wrong, but I think there's like a weird caveat that allows for what Slicker did, which is sports betting. Uh huh. It's still allowed on the platform. Same with like fantasy sports betting and also with um poker. Right. Which, you know, don't get me wrong. I think this is a good move to take slots off, especially because it is the biggest one. Yeah. But it's a solid step in the right direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what a weird impetus for this is that it's slicker was scamming people to continue sports betting, which ironically is still going to be allowed on the platform with the, the new policy update. Yeah. So it's like just interesting how they're going around going uh through with this policy update Mm -hmm. in consideration of that and then i i I don't know if you are ready to move on but like that kind of talk about it the ban right the ban from uh from twitch not twitter i'm Mm -hmm. always getting those mixed up uh but they announced on september 20th that they would end streaming of gambling websites that were illegal in the united states not sports betting yeah (laughs) so think steak all those international places that like hang out in in offshore places like yeah curacao or whatever um yeah so think of those places where you need to move to canada or go to mexico to gamble from legally those sites will be banned on twitch that will those rules will be taken effect on october 18th so you shouldn't be able to gamble uh, via slots um, mm-hmm. and and crypto casinos also specifically. Ooh. Yeah, but okay. uh, but DraftKings. So that's that's a big one. DraftKings uh-huh. is now sponsoring Twitch, which is sports betting. Yeah. Very legally. Um, that's like very legally. Football or is it all sports? All sports. Okay. Um, and that's again super legal, very heavily regulated. Um, I don't know. <laughs> regulated. I, I, yeah, I put it in quotes because it's like it's still luck based. No, you're right. You know? You're right. Like, so, but that's, that's to come on October 18th. So anyone that is really big on, you know, gambling has, has until then to maybe figure out how to, how to make the switch to sports betting. <laughs> what do you think these guys are going to do with their uh, lack of jobs, like train wrecks, XQC, Aiden, uh, all these guys? Um, I think we're going to continue hearing from them all the way up until October 18th. Um, like advocating but to keep it on like to remain part yeah of twitch i mean i get the impression that that's what's happening now um even with like how uh how most of the gamble streamers just comport themselves Mm -hmm. and i think even uh i don't think that they're gonna be fruitful at all i don't think their whining is gonna like change the the policy update do me a favor and hit that fan for me yeah like uh, I have this window. Turn it off. Yeah, I have a okay. window open behind us, and I keep getting freaked out because I keep feeling like this thing move. Oh, and for I, sure. I don't know if it's my dog, but I think it's just the blind. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I but I I think even afterwards they'll still complain about um about the policy update. Uh, I just for how long I don't know. Um, if Twitch stays strong on it and doesn't like change the policy update at all and like it's good, it's gone for or it's gone for good. Right. I mean, they're just gonna move on to the next content. I don't see them leaving. They're already too invested on the platform. Yeah, and they have huge followings too. They've yeah. amassed huge followings prior to gambling. I, mm. I don't know actually much about train wrecks. Like I know he had a yeah, scuff podcast, so I think he was he was doing fine on his Is own. Is that still like produced? I think it's coming No, I don't think so. I think no? it's it's coming back. Okay. But Ultimately, you know, XQC and Trainwreck, both, they just, they want to keep their bag. It, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they want. And they are steadfast against that. Yeah. Um, Which which led a lot of those big streamers, like we mentioned, Hassan, Pokey, Mizkif, um, big, big top echelon streamers come out and say, we're going to boycott. The drama ensued. Um, I don't know if we want to go into too much detail. Sebastian, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing, man? You better watch your drink. I don't know what he's doing, um, but I, I don't know how, how much you wanted to go into the drama about the things that came out during that saga. Well, I, I mean, I think it is important to just state the facts. Um, so during I, the saga, yeah, yeah um, I think it was Asmongold or someone from OTK posted sure. like, yeah, I'm backing the let's let's ban gambling movement. Yeah. Um, again, train wrecks and XQC um, angry because that's their bag. Right. Mm-hmm. Trying to protect their bag. 
Um, and then in an argument on Twitter, right, over banning the slots, train wrecks accuses Ms. Kiff um, of essentially covering up, uh, you know, sexual assault allegations. Mm -hmm. um, and that becomes this really big dramatic ordeal yeah. um, all over both platforms. Totally. Because a lot of streamers were involved. Uh, Ms. Kiff puts out a statement. Many, many of the streamers involved put out a statement as well. Um, and I think that is still ongoing, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. No, I think so too. If I was going to develop any opinion on um, on the sexual assault situation, is that the victim deserves way better, deserves okay. way more, and continue. I feel like they are continuing to con take L's. Like it wasn't introduced in the way that, like I feel, uh, it deserves what, to be yeah. handled. Like, well, not even like as the situation deserves but i think the actual victim it, it should have been handled better for them i do think they said it was okay though to train rex to do it this way i, I also want to say yeah. that because I, I do remember hearing her say something along those lines that totally. it was okay so i think her consent was given mm -hmm. um but i think like even though their consent was given like mm -hmm. what were the circumstances of that consent because you know she Oh, like, she, well, okay, yeah. Because yeah. she had, it's almost like the, kind of like a loop from the beginning, right? Is that she felt, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but what I've understood is that she felt like she was being suppressed or silenced in the beginning, which is mm -hmm. why it took so long for her to come forward. And yeah, yeah. It was, it was like, uh, essentially she felt social pressure to parse her words and, mm -hmm. and change them to meet a narrative that she wasn't entirely sure mm -hmm. met how she felt. Yeah, which you know? is fucked up in itself yeah. because, like, ultimately, it would have been more ideal if she was in a place that was safe and supportive mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. she could have said something right off the bat Yep, because she deserved um, justice right then and there. She was wronged and she was continued she continued yeah. to be wronged and miss gives until. ass double down on it too mm -hmm. that was so bad it was so that, cringe in that like video or whatever and he he said like oh it was a small sexual assault mm -hmm. and he uh, and he's still kind of getting away with it so right now bro. i mean i dude he's been am i is he getting away with it i think he's I, I he's think, out right i mean and he, i mean at, <laughs> waiting for everything to unfold mm -hmm. he might come back but as of now it seems like he's out, brother. Yeah, but I still don't think that he's facing enough consequences that, like... He ran away. That's yeah, what he did. He he's, ran away. He's not facing enough consequences that are uh, equitable to to um, uh, Adriana. Uh, yeah, to Adriana. Because she yeah. suffered so much in comparison. And, you know, he, he still has the bag. He still has, like resources available to him just because of his position and right. you know that i think is still unfair um yeah and, and the alleged yeah. assaulter in the case crazy slick mm -hmm. just not a good week for slicks if <laughs> if your name is slick not a good week for you yeah um he, he's minimizing it too so it's just everything coming out from that end is just not Trash. looking yeah just not looking good not not good etiquette not mm -hmm. no accountability um Crazy slick, like posted on it as Twitter. I'm getting the lawyer ASAP. Learn from the Johnny Depp situation. Oh god! So like, that's the attitude that he crazy slick's taking. He learned nothing from it. If that's what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just not looking good, dude. It is not looking good. Subsequent, you know, leaks have come out, and again, all of these leaks are directly tied to gambling in the sense that they're coming from a place of gotcha. They're coming from a place of I've been sitting on this information, mm -hmm. and now I'm weaponizing it. Mm -hmm. That's so toxic. Yeah, well, and Fake that, friends, I think man. that's actually what <laughs> like, I was trying to say earlier, but I think you're kind of helping me with the know? language is that the gotcha system is that the way it was introduced by Train was self-serving. It wasn't yeah. to serve Adriana, even though it did have some periphery effect for them. I don't think right. it was the um, I don't think that it was 100 percent an open platform and uplifting of Adriana to be able to say what she needed to say. It was, I'm lifting myself up, myself being trained. Yeah. And I'm doing it in a way where it will look like I'm a good guy because I'm doing it for Adriana. But it's under this guise that, that is for Adriana. But it's really, you know, he, 
it was really for him, you know. It, all of a sudden, we're not talking about gambling now. Yeah, he totally and it took the, took the the ire and the conversation in a whole different direction. And for like what a day, two days, we stopped talking about gambling on Twitch. But also, Twitch already, you know, they already kind of made up their mind about at least taking steps in a direction. Mm -hmm. uh, but all week, also, Twitch has been it has been taking steps. Um, in very strange directions while all of this drama is taking place. And mm -hmm. meanwhile, during all of this, Matt Gates joined Twitch. Yeah, which is so <laughs> weird. That I wasn't aware of. And I feel like... Come on, dude. Representative Matt Gates has joined Twitch, you guys. Let's go. <laughs> but, like, why? Do we do we know why? Yeah, because he wants to be the right-wing Hassan Piker. Let's just say what it is. Dude, that's exactly what he said. He wants to bring the MAGA narrative to the younger audience and he he deems the younger audience to be twitch so matt gates is here to share his, his narrative with us Wait, he's a so is, he's a current congressperson right he's a representative yeah florida representative is he even matt allowed gates. to do that can he yeah i mean i mean yeah aoc gets on it you know ig lives oh, all the time true. she plays among us you know i uh, i mean i know jagmeet is not u.s but mm -hmm. you know there's there's a lot of politicians that have been no you're totally into right it. bernie has a has a twitch account uh -huh. sparingly uses it mostly for corporate stuff you know like you know but even even in stuff. terms of like having the current sex trafficking investigation he's still he's <laughs> like you're still allowed to do that so yeah all of this week twitch has just had the worst storm of bad media because bloomberg also came out with a story about how twitch is a platform oh, true, that true, many true, true, true. people use for predation of minors because it's such a prevalent platform for for minors to yeah. use you know yeah and then here comes matt gates right with he's a he's a you know an Fucking accused timing. predator um, yeah yeah jesus christ twitch <laughs> what are we doing you know what i mean like yeah. it's just kind of a shit show and um on, on top of all of that on top of everything that's going on socially with twitch and its community twitch decides to cut the profit share mm -hmm. um for revenue and monetization policies also also weird timing right after right after that like pr uh w yeah with the gambling everyone seemed to like love that yeah, of course they did. Of course they did. That's what everybody, people have been planning a boycott mm -hmm. <laughs> specifically to to ban ban gambling. And then they do this, get the dub. And then within 12 hours, they're like, OK, was it really within 12 hours? <laughs> yeah, it was quite literally That's the next hilarious. morning. This this story breaks that Twitch is updating its revenue share policy and and really hitting its most performing uh -huh. Twitch uh content creators which is wild because you think these stories come out and it's like it's always a little guy getting screwed mm -hmm. over but it's actually the the large content creator that will now be on the same garbage playing field as mm -hmm. the small content creators um okay yeah before we jump into it as an affiliate um and we look at these numbers before we do that i'm an affiliate and i am averaging like 3.5 viewers okay they're mm -hmm. very very small <laughs> my my ad revenue split is like 45 percent 40 percent interesting which is even lower than the 50 and i didn't even know that and uh -huh. um i posted that on my twitter too there's a screenshot i didn't even know i was getting that low of ad ad revenue mm -hmm. anyway i thought that was interesting because apparently it's it's you can earn higher than that that's just what i uh, my revenue split is so top content creators often have always had the 70 30 split but now they're gonna have a 50 50 split which is gonna be the same as affiliates mm -hmm. and you could potentially be really a big cut to the top top content creators here no i believe it i do want to give a shout a uh, quick shout out to moist critical um because i did watch moist. a video yeah so moist thank critical. you charlie for the info thanks charlie um but i do think that um what i learned from his video was that uh uh it's on the tip of my tongue i'm like reading this article and i got distracted um but that subbies primies yeah 70 30s your brain's that, there oh, okay yes there it is. okay there it is. so um <laughs> the reason being that twitch gave this reason um is that the bandwidth costs are going up and that's the reason yeah, because of amazon web services yeah. right yeah and he he was saying that that's ridiculous because they're backed by a giant corporation and they can't afford it they can afford this plus more so oh, it's yeah, just totally. it's just uh straight cut greed 
Yeah. I mean, that's exactly what we're experiencing in this economy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get the economy real yeah, quick. Yeah, fucking say so, it, dude. Fucking yeah, say it. What happens, right, when the feds are hiring these interest rates, they're, they're hiking them up, and that's supposed to put strain on businesses, mm -hmm. right, so that they hire less. But what really happens when that, when that occurs is this. They, yeah. they have more of a leg to stand on. Oh, it's more expensive nowadays, isn't it? Isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. people, viewers, users, right? Yeah. You know, you, you, you see your bills every month. Well, we have high bills, too. <laughs> so they're, they're, you know, it's like not supposed to be like that because as we know profit has been booming for corporations yeah. ceos have had you know booming salaries mm -hmm. right i wonder why the profits, prices are increasing huh profits have increased but that's what kind of the issue is is sustaining those those exponentially increasing profit margins is not sustainable mm -hmm. um and that's what we're we're finding out here so this is a corporation saying okay fuck, how can we squeeze out as much profit as we can well we have all these top echelon streamers that are getting a good deal mm -hmm. we can get more profit we already waste money on these free primes what are you doing subsidies let's make this money back so that's how they're going to continue just exponentially growing that profit margin that yeah. that has been slowing a little bit i imagine because of everything that's been happening but mm -hmm. not to the point where this is necessary yeah not it's totally. just not necessary thank you for coming to my ted talk <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so okay this drops right so just a complete shit show for twitch right now yeah uh the revenue share and then now their twitch content creator chief is exiting so they have mm -hmm. left their position um and the platform is reducing the revenue a revenue share split um and meanwhile an executive is also leaving who is Part of a major process of this. So in a letter to employees on Wednesday obtained by Bloomberg, uh, Constance Knight said that she is embarking on a new adventure that provides exciting growth opportunities for me, both professionally and personally in the creator space. Knight, the executive, held similar positions at Instagram and YouTube. So she didn't even state where she's going, but she did it the same day they announced the revenue share split change in policy not looking good it's not looking good it looks weird yeah. it looks bad at twitch right now until october 18th <laughs> <laughs> i don't know dude it's just not it's not looking too hot yeah there's a lot of changes all at once happening on twitch i okay this is the thought process in my mind too is that like i don't have diagnosed ocd mm -hmm. but I am fairly certain that I have some form of it just from things I notice in my own life and things I do on a habitual basis. Um, but like, if you're streaming on Twitch, you're probably already posting videos on YouTube. And a lot of like the, the discoverability comes from off platform. So doing things on like TikTok, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and then funneling those uh those viewers or readers or whatever to twitch true so why wouldn't you just like put everything on youtube in my mind it's just like one stop shop i'd rather just go to mm. one i just want one social media i'm gonna post everything to it right it's, it's because like for live streaming it doesn't it doesn't work well like, because I of think... the chat and because of the interface yeah. i totally understand that yeah all of it literally all of it but like i think personally having to toggle between different social media just bugs me so much i would just force myself to deal with the the crap at youtube yeah you've just never because been i know like it's media. all there you've never liked social media i never have i'm not a big fan <laughs> never and that's why i media. struggle i struggle as a content creator because it's like i don't like you are the anti social media content creator i am you really are i really am you know but yeah. if you come and meet me in real life we're gonna have a great time that's so funny dude i didn't even think about it like that you really don't like social media i don't no and it, but i do i do try i do yeah i do i consume it i you love do. consuming <laughs> yeah, social media like i love watching youtube i love watching like selling sunset you know or think, selling oc yeah you know who i think does the youtube transition from ditching that that twitch platform and just cutting out that middleman moving to youtube entirely was mm. myth and i don't know i can't speak to his analytics or his channel growth or 
viewer retention or any of the things that actually matter. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I will say is the aesthetic of his page, the way that he chose to organize it all, it's it's really beautiful. So shout out, <laughs> Myth. I love the way that your YouTube page looks, the way that the shorts and the uploads and the VODs are all separate. Mm-hmm. I think that's really cool. And then you have someone like Ludwig who's just yeah. like, I'm not blending anything and I'm going to have different channels for everything I do. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's just, there's so much that YouTube has to work out because right now it's just all so much on the content creator that it's like, how do you make the switch? Is it going to be a valuable one for me? Am I going to have access to any of these third party tools, et cetera? It's just, mm-hmm. it's such a headache. Totally. Like they just haven't figured it out, you know? Yeah. Um, but I would stream on YouTube in a heartbeat if it was like this setting, like we're just using a podcast kind mm-hmm. of setting. That's dope. I think that is way more doable. Mm-hmm. But if I wanted to go build a Lego set or, you know, yeah, you're they don't probably going to head over to Twitch. Yeah. They don't have a makers like in crafting section. Uh-huh. On the on a YouTube directory, like they oh, don't, I didn't you know even what I mean? Like that. they don't like have the categories and the the hashtags games. and stuff. Like you can click on the Fortnite one. Yeah. Like they have the big like title, like th- you know, big mm-hmm. title games. But okay, it's just the community. They don't have a robust system at all. Their directory is shot, and their mm-hmm. algorithm is racist. So yeah, I mean, for <laughs> for those sucks. tuning in, like you know, drop a comment and let us know, like. Would you tune in to a YouTube live stream of the podcast and then if we drop it as like a standalone video like we normally do, but on top of that, having the live stream or live streaming on Twitch rather? For us, I think you would just be we live stream it and then keep it up. I think that See, would, that just would be, be it. cool too. But like an H3 kind of setup. That's just for us. Yeah. Um, please, viewers, if you have an opinion, let us know. Um, because it, ultimately, it's kind of like middle school. We're get, trying to give you the attention. And <laughs> we care about you. <laughs> we care about you, and we want you to be able to consume our content like as you would like. The and best way possible. Having your input really does help. But YouTube, what they have been doing well is getting them dubs. Okay, let me tell you what. <laughs> While Twitch has been, you know, on fire in a dumpster, YouTube uh-huh. has been just giga chatting it up with all of these sort of like beta tests, monetization effort pushes, and all uh-huh. of these like press releases. It's they've been killing it this week and it's been going really under the radar because of twitch's being on fire Mm -hmm. in the forefront (laughs) i mean people do like watching a fire yeah but people also love money and i think youtube is smelling that because (laughs) they are not only hoping to launch um this this new way to pay people with their shorts so Mm -hmm. sort of like tiktok but do you do you watch youtube shorts i I know like every once in a while we'll (laughs) click on them but i'm not like seeking them out it's just like sometimes on my phone you know and i think that's how yeah most people probably digest the shorts is on your phone i don't watch the shorts on my desktop for example and and that's what i think youtube noticed and that's why they pushed it at the the summit for youtube um they had a summit for all their big content creators on tuesday of this week and they were pushing these youtube shorts because of this announcement that they're going to be offering different monetization options Mm -hmm. Um, that actually are better than TikTok and Instagram uh, for how they pay their content creators. For sure. So, and they're also going to be enabling super thanks. What is that? So it's it's similar to like on a live stream on YouTube, how you can get like a membership, like bits almost like on Twitch. Like they're just extra things in Got chat. It. TikTok does it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, YouTube is wanting to do that as another push to have a revenue stream for mm-hmm. content creators. Like slowly but surely developing their chat inter- interface and, and buttons and whatnot. And also the hours that your YouTube shorts hit will be um, part of the hours that plays into you becoming monetized as part of the partnership program. For sure. So th- these are all really good because in order to qualify for the partnership program, um, you got to do a lot of things and mm-hmm. meet an incredibly high threshold, which they're also thinking about lowering the threshold for monetization. Mm-hmm. That lowering could be a game threshold changer. for monetization so mm-hmm. like w- uh like is that um dictated by like f- subscriber count or by like view time or yeah, how's so that p- done these are good questions um but the monetization for shorts uh the numbers there is creators will take 45 percent of the revenue and youtube will be pocketing 55 oh, which shit, is it is kind of like tiktok i mm-hmm. kind of totally went over that that did not hit me in the head as much as i thought it would so that's more than what tiktok does more than instagram does Uh um 
So that that's really good. But as far as lowering the threshold for the monetization to enter okay yeah, yeah. The partnership Sorry, program. <laughs> no, no 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 totally though it's it's, it's connected though yeah, no, because totally. remember those shorts were not being funneled into that monetization for the partnership program uh-huh. um and now now they're they're thinking about even lowering the threshold to enter the partnership program which would be very cool mm-hmm. because right now you have to have 1000 subscribers and 4000 hours of watch time on long form videos within one year. But now they're saying the watch time from the shorts could also be part of that as well. Um, So you can combine that. That's awesome. That is awesome. awesome. That's awesome. They used to be separated. Um, And also, in addition to that, they were tinkering around with lowering the hours watched in a year. Okay. So we can see more information come out about that soon too. And currently that's 4K hours. Yeah, right now you got to have 4K hours. Um, But with that said, dude, if you're streaming on YouTube, right? You're streaming on YouTube, you got your shorts on YouTube, and you're pumping out long-form content, exactly like Myth kind of does, how he does on his channel. I mean, that's that could be potential for a lot of revenue. Um, While it's not exactly a Twitch Prime free, like, membership or whatever, Mm -hmm. it could be competitive. It could be competitive. I believe it. This is interesting. This, like... I would. I can't wait to see how this unfolds because I bet you that um, there are creators that are like strictly YouTube shorts mm-hmm. who will probably will get elevated because of this. You know what I mean? Well, like we'll totally, see totally. we'll see new content, new channels, and maybe like actual like um, a boosting of production come out of the YouTube shorts and mm-hmm. then move on to like longer format YouTube videos. Because what I would love to see is like, like Twitch is a great example. Like how uh-huh. their directory works is it's based off of numbers. So if you're like a one to two to three viewer Andy, you kind of sit at the bottom with like a lot of lot of two three viewer Andys, mm-hmm. and like it's really hard to get out of the bottom of the directory. And that kind of like expedites that that growth between the very tip top and like uh-huh. the bottom. Like they say, like if you get over fifty two viewers, you're mm-hmm. already in the upper one percent of Twitch. Like that's yeah, how difficult that too. Yeah, and that's how difficult it is to do that. So I'm hoping that at YouTube, those are the things they notice about Twitch. Mm-hmm. And while they're going to take away, you know, and, and mimic Twitch's product features that are good, maybe they can actually start fixing the shit that's bad at Twitch too. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying though? No, I hear you. I so hear you. It, it's not enough to just take the product features that are benefiting the platform for live streaming community, but making them even better. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, like if YouTube does that, not only they have the legacy media side, the legacy website, mm-hmm. dude, they can they can take away that they can take market share yeah. very quickly. You know, it's interesting too because it, like what I'm hearing right now is that YouTube is like adapting, is innovating, is like changing things mm-hmm. literally mm-hmm. in how people like interact with YouTube, like the consumer, the ki- the customer. Whereas like Twitch is not doing that. Twitch is I I cuz now that I think about it I, Twitch has looked the same since I hopped on. Like, it looks exactly how it looked when I started watching Twitch in 2020. But YouTube looks way different when I open it up. I mean, to to an extent. It it still looks like YouTube in the sense that, like, when I scroll, I see, like, thumbnails of videos. But aesthetically, yes. They're starting to reorganize the way that YouTube is presented to its users, Mm -hmm. which is super helpful. Yeah. And... What I will say, though, is I know that YouTube is much bigger than Twitch as far as, like, the users on it, okay. which means, like, the security they have and, like, the features that do run on it need to be way tighter than, yeah. than Twitch. Twitch could, like, put out betas and be like, hey, let me know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How'd that work for you? Yeah. Oh, that was just shite. And, like, that's that's like that's what Twitch can do. But YouTube, I don't know if they could do that. I feel like they have a lot of engineers sitting on hands. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, at YouTube, they're just like... Can I change this button feature? Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. very like aesthetic shit that they're uh-huh. changing. They should just let their developers like collaborate with like Ludwig developers and like really start building this out. Maybe they already are. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I know Ludwig actively tries to like give input and like advice. Could be kind of like, um, <laughs> well, you're just a creator. <laughs> what do you know? Kind of deal. Yeah. I mean, I don't really see them 
use any of his advice. And I'm not saying that it's because I noticed that. It's just that I've heard Ludwig say that, <laughs> that they, they don't use any of his advice, but he, he is pretty adamant that it's probably going to be good advice. It is good advice. I think so. Um, I mean, he's one of the top creators and stayed the top creator moving platforms, Yeah, which is impressive in itself. I mean, that, even that he'll say though, even he'll say that maybe there was some sort of artificial help from the algorithm that ensured a smooth move because he was one of the first. He I mean, did say I mean, he did admit to that himself too. Isn't isn't every move kind of artificial? You're forcing it in the sense oh, of no, like no, I meant the algorithm. Oh, like what, as what? far as him being supported and and being successful in his transition over. Uh huh. Um, like in the, the discoverability algorithm could and shit? have played a role. Okay. So, for example, his first live, he said, was was obviously more than he was expecting. But he said maybe it was because of the algorithm. Like Got they it. wanted him to experience a. Um, in, in like tech, they use like um, this phrase of like a positive experience, and like they'll do pretty much anything to get the user to have a positive experience at least the first time. Mm -hmm. So that I way think you'll that, keep going. Exactly. Got so it. like if Ludwig experience is good, uh -huh. then maybe he'll continue to to have a good narrative, yeah. which is totally what algorithms. I mean, are it's kind to of do, a I good guess. idea. I think that's kind of a good idea. I mean, that, yeah. in a way, that's like a little tricky a little, maybe a little scummy but like you know um but hey dude listen listen i am here for it i'm thinking about moving to youtube again mm -hmm. um i said in my youtube video dude like i'm a nobody there i think being a nobody on on youtube would be just as easy <laughs> you know what i mean i yeah. just wish that you know things would be making a little bit more progress um especially all this good stuff coming out from youtube no, i want totally. to see the product features meet that that's what I want to see. Mm -hmm. So, um, but before we do go, uh, we have a follow up. Mm -hmm. We have a follow up story about the GTA leaks I see it. I see it. that I was so scared about. I was thinking about going back into the last week's bot and actually editing out that part. I didn't tell okay. you this because Rockstar's so litigious and they're like they're oh, they're pursuing yeah. of like their their IP that I knew the leak was happening. I wasn't even sure the footage was real. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what we we're seeing was real, but we played it on our podcast last week. And I was reading all the articles about how they're looking for the person and like scrubbing the internet of the footage mm -hmm. because Rockstar was so upset that like they've been working on this for 10 years and for it to come out that way. Um, anyway, I was going to edit it out, but they caught the guy this 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 week during all the drama. Mm -hmm. um, he was like 17 year old dude from uh, like, I don't know, Britain or something. Mm -hmm. But that's an update on that. They got him. Got him. Pew, pew, pew. Got Kinda him. sucks. <laughs> Hacker man's uh, taken down by Rockstar. Yeah. Um, I mean, like... <laughs> I, do you have, like, d feelings about it? Do you want me to, like, kind of set you up real quick and you could gather them? I mean, my, uh, my initial thought was, Sorry. like... No, that's okay. My initial... <laughs> <laughs> my initial thought is the guy's fucking 17. Like, He's a kid. Yeah, like... I, I'm just worried about like the extent they're going to take punishment mm -hmm. and consequences. Like, yeah. are they going to try this kid? Like, how does the legal system even work in the UK? Are they going to try him as an adult? Are the consequences going to be harsh? Is like this kid is he was nine be... years old when the last GTA came out. Like, yeah, what is I'm just like, like I want, <laughs> what the fuck? I want the kid to be okay ultimately. Yeah, I mean, and apparently like, he remains in police custody. Shit? I mean, you know, I care, but not about him getting arrested. I don't want him to get arrested. Yeah. I care because I just wanted to know it was real. It's <laughs> a fucking video game. Like, what did we really gain? We didn't even learn that much. We All we learned is that there's going to be a six. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You they should have give told this... us yourself before we had to get the info ourselves. Yeah, dude. Like, give this this king his crown, you know, not a, not a cell. He's... He's doing the Lord's work here. We needed to know. <laughs> we needed to know. We did. People were losing their goddamn minds. Ten years. Yeah. It's been. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> I want it. I'm just really excited. I'm very. No, no one, one makes, makes it to the, the end of the video. video. They're not going to see me freaking out about GTA. Okay. <laughs> I see the <laughs> analytics. And, and most of you guys aren't even subscribed. So what does that say about you? <laughs> On that note. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really. Too much coffee, I th I think. I think that's going around, you know. The one stream I did catch of Hassan was like recently oh was him drinking like eight cups of coffee and playing <laughs> playing um, play up 
He was like, I haven't had sugar in forever. <laughs> Honestly, I'm here for it. Uh, Hassan, <laughs> you should introduce some some processed sugar into your diet. With that said, though, I think that's this is going to be it for us. You didn't. Oh, I thought this was like part of the inside of the house. I think I think you're supposed I, I just to take left that it out. in. Is it, am I supposed to? It, it looked to too fabricy. Is it supposed to? Am I supposed to take it out? It does come I think out. It's supposed to come out. Shit. <laughs> it's, all good. it's all good, brother. Hey, um, I'm B. And I'm Nathan. And this has been your React Lord Pod. Rock on. See you next week, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid.